I'm hopelessly addicted to murder mysteries. In fact, if you want to email me with some suggestions of like some super obscure detective thing that I wouldn't have watched already, I mean, I'm forced to source them from Russia now. <laughs> when I watch these things, I am computing p-values. So geek. Though I submit to you, if you like detective stories, you are also computing p-values. Let's see. We have an episode. A victim is found dead in his apartment. The suspect is the victim's best friend. The police search the victim's apartment for fingerprints and they discover a wine glass with the suspect's fingerprints on it in the victim's apartment. How do we feel? Convict? Guilty? No? So innocent then, yeah? Innocent? Of course not. You learn nothing here. This does not tell you that the suspect is certainly innocent. It does not tell you that you're making the right choice by leaving them out of prison. It tells you nothing. But because your default action says, upon learning nothing, I leave this person out of prison, that's what you go and do. But you learn nothing. Because this evidence is not informative, doesn't make you change your mind. A little reminder here. Okay. On the other hand, imagine if instead of a wine glass, they found the murder weapon with the suspect's fingerprints on it. How are you feeling now? Convict? Guilty? I see some people nodding, and I see some people vehemently shaking their heads, and that is exactly the point. You are comparing the strength of this evidence against a threshold that you have set for how much evidence you require in order to pull the trigger, if you will. And different people have different tolerances for the risk of being wrong and sending an innocent person to prison. And so when you do the testing, kind of the whole point of the procedure is that way at the beginning, the decision maker gets to say, here is where I set my tolerance for the risk of making a mistake. And when I have set those risk preferences, subject to them, let's see if I should change my mind or if I should keep doing what I was going to do. And so the results are individual to the decision maker who has set those risk parameters up front. Statistically significant means nothing to you unless you have chosen what your risk profile is, what assumptions you're willing to live with, and how you want to frame the whole decision. The best you can do with it as an innocent bystander is be inspired or not, and not take it too seriously. So this is a decision-making tool where you are allowed to specify very clearly how much risk you're willing to take, and then have the method guarantee that it sends you to one action or another action in a way that makes sense according to your risk profile. And in this case, the particular number here is the significance level, which is your maximum tolerable probability of leaving your default action incorrectly. So that's the kind of story here, and so it involves a whole lot of settings from the decision maker has no meaning unless there was a lot of thinking there about what we were trying to do and how we wanted to execute the decision. When can you skip testing? If there is no decision to make, if you, the decision maker, have said this isn't that important, I'm already going to go with building it no matter what, you don't have to do this. But if it matters and if you want to control your risk, then you want to go and do this stuff.